advances in culture, tourism, and hospitality research. And the papers in here are rather long, typically 50 to 100 uh, text pages. And this gives the authors a chance to really elaborate on theory and, and research related to tourism. And the Academy was founded in uh, really 1998, and it meets every two years. And the next meeting is in June in Vienna. Well, I started working tourism uh, accidentally. I was asked by uh, a dean to work with uh, the uh, Department of Parks, Recreation, and Tourism in the state of South Carolina on advertising effectiveness measurement. Of, because each state spends anywhere from, well, most states spend anywhere from five to a hundred million dollars in advertising to attract visitors. So the question is, what type of payback does a state get for its money? So I've been doing that type of research for uh, uh, oh, a couple of decades for different states and Canadian provinces. So the first one was in 74, and that was the first uh, study published on advertising conversion research. So you talk about conversion of people who inquire uh, uh, through your advertising for information. Do they actually visit? So um, and I still do that type of research. Well, typically what's called the, the top three journals, the A-plus level journals, uh, would be um, Journal of Travel Research, Tourism Management, and Annals of Tourism Research. Altogether, there's about 45 journals related to tourism. The library does a very good job at uh, providing uh, the leading journals. Uh, we have uh, all three, Tourism Management, Journal of Travel Research, and Annals of Tourism Research. Well, of course, the money. Uh, uh, tourism altogether is two trillion dollars, so that's two thousand billion dollars. Uh, uh, some states and some uh, cities and some countries rely on tourism as their number one industry. Of course, in the U.S., Hawaii would be an example. And some uh, some countries have a very strong educational program in tourism. For example, Australia, and the government has a, a big uh, research budget for tourism studies. Unfortunately the U.S. does not really support tourism research uh, by academic uh, uh, researchers uh, to any real extent. Well, one thing related to that is that people often can answer questions, but their, their answers have no relationship to the reasons for their behavior, so we have to find other means to understand the motivations behind their trip and uh, the impact of uh, uh, psychology related to uh, completing a trip. And so I think uh, there's been a, um, a number of advances related to uh, the use of psychological theories. For example, archetypes uh, in Carl Jung's work in uh, motivating uh, people to, uh, to reach uh, to accomplish some inner goal in their lives uh, through travel. And uh, uh, the journals, I think, are very, very good journals in the, in the type of research that they uh, have available to, to uh, break into this new type of uh, nonverbal uh, research and uh, um, longitudinal research of travel behavior. I think one weakness uh, out of the, uh, uh, a lot of programs don't recognize the importance of tourism. Uh, 26 business schools in the U.S. have tourism departments, but the majority do not. And tourism is uh, found in lots of different uh, colleges around the U.S. and. Uh, uh, so I think one weakness is it doesn't have the uh, stature that maybe it should have. And then another weakness is, uh, the, in terms of scholarship, the, the continuing over-reliance on asking questions in terms of trying to uh, learn uh, the motivations and the, as well as the actual behavior of, of tourism. Uh, we need to get beyond uh, 
asking questions in order to learn the uh, reason why as well as um, uh, the actual behavior uh, that, uh, that tourists do. In North America, probably University of Calgary has an excellent program with degrees at the uh, undergraduate, master's, and PhD level within the business school. Uh, and uh, uh, the Wirtschaft Universität in Vienna is probably the number one school in, uh, in uh, Europe in tourism. And uh, there's a number of schools in Australia, like University of uh, New South Wales in Sydney has an excellent uh, tourism program. And New Zealand also is very, very active in tourism scholarship and education. This particular series uh, has uh, a long paper in it by Ken Hyde on, uh, on unconscious and conscious thinking by, uh, in the area of tourism. Uh, there's a, a long paper on mural tourism uh, up in northern Canada, which is kind of uh, unique. And so one of the th valuable things about this series is the fact that it publishes unique papers on specialized topics that have a long life span. Uh, and, you know, eventually uh, you, uh, you find readers because, uh, uh, just as an example, there's a, there's a paper by uh, G G uh, Jean uh, Ewert in uh, Narrative uh, 1990 on <clears throat> analyzing uh, visual narrative art, uh, particularly Spiegelman's um, two books uh, on on the Holocaust as told through comics of uh, a cat and mice. This was a very uh, well-received book, both in terms of scholarship. Uh, it's a, actually a non-fiction comic. Well, uh, uh, that's kind of a unique publication. Uh, but in the field of um, visual narrative art, it's a very important piece of work. and. Uh, I would say that this series is an example of that type of type of work. Speaking of which, there's a wonderful book that's out of print but available online from Ohio State University Press entitled uh, Paintings from Books by a fellow uh, named Altic, and uh, he analyzes literary paintings. And right now I'm very interested and in, I'm doing work on visual narrative art in terms of uh, explaining behavior. This is supposed to come out every year, which is kind of difficult uh, to, uh, uh, but usually there'll be a volume at least every other year in this series. And then also there's a recent volume on, entitled Tours and Management, which has 26 um, chapters in it by leading authorities within the area of uh, tours and management. And uh, this is published by CABI, which is a British publishing house. And they have a, a large, uh, number of uh, books in the area of tourism and leisure studies. And this is a book in their series that, uh, this is not a series, but uh, CABI publishes uh, two to three books a year on tourism. And then we also have a new journal that, uh, it's not an A-plus level journal yet in terms of their rankings, but I think it, someday it will be. It was uh, part of the International Academy of uh, Culture, Tourism, and Hospitality Research. And the new journal is the International Journal of Culture, Tourism, and Hospitality Research. And that comes out four times a year, and that's published by Emerald, which is um, uh, one of the, one of the uh, leading publishing houses in the world. They publish uh, approximately, uh, uh, I'd say, 500 journals, and uh, I don't know how many dozens of books annually. Are you the editor of that? I'm the editor of that journal. Well, again, each state has an audit department, okay, which is rather interesting. And so uh, there's been a number of uh, management performance audits done on, um, on the state departments of, of tourism and, uh, and recreation. 
again, a state might be spending $100 million on advertising. So the question is, how effective is that? And the interesting thing about this accountability research, uh, my colleague, uh, the dean at University of Hawaii, and I did a uh, accountability uh, audit. So we did a we did a evaluation of the evaluations. Okay, so you have, uh, and, and the main finding was that the um, most of these evaluations indicate that the performance of state departments of tourism, which is really a marketing department. Uh, have very little uh, evidence of accountability. Uh, they uh, they don't really spend very much money on accountability, and they, they they really don't have any idea what they're getting for their money. So the audits are highly negative, but then the audits themselves have very little evidence of thoroughness and understanding of uh, marketing management. It, it's sort of like the um, uh, SEC uh, uh, not. Uh, being able to cope with Bernie Maddock in uh, in the in corruption, it's it's not so much an issue of corruption; it's just an issue of incompetence uh, by the auditors as well as the departments of tourism. So it's kind of a sad state of affairs. Uh, and, and that type of um, research uh, uh, appears in uh, both of these books, for example. So th th that's kind of exciting because uh, I think in so many fields, accountability is an extremely in important issue. And so the question is, what, is what, are, what are the appropriate theories on accountability? And what are the studies that had really uh, ad ad advanced the field of accountability? And we, we need to be very concerned about this, uh, particularly since we now know that uh, you can't you can't really live without regulation because when you do that, we end up with the type of situation we're in right now. Related to uh, working at BC, uh, I've been working with uh, uh, universities in Taiwan, uh, both the Chinese Medical University as well as the A Asia University. Uh, in terms of uh, culture and study tour uh, 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 open to BC students. And uh, we had BC students attend last summer for a one month program where they studied the culture in, uh, in the afternoons and went on cultural tours around Taiwan. And then in the mornings, they studied Mandarin language for a month. And the students reported back it was a, it was a, a wonderful experience. And the, uh, each student received a grant, a travel grant of um, $1,200, and then free accommodations and free tuition for that program. And so uh, I hope to uh, attract some students in that program this coming summer. So that would be an example of, of the relationship to students. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the idea here is that by um, by actually visiting and living in other cultures, you, you develop greater tolerance and understanding and uh, uh, friendships and, and people and, uh, who, who live in other countries.